Hello, my name is Joanna Dillman. Today I am reviewing a book written by James Twitchell, a former English professor at the University of Florida. The title of the book is Branded Nation, the Marketing of Mega Church, College Inc., and Museum World. Out of the list of books provided as choices to review, I chose Branded Nation because I felt it may provide some tips on developing a brand for the community college I'm employed with. As my employer just recently became a technical and community college, it is in its early stages of developing a brand. I had hoped the book would provide some helpful insight and may even assist with the development of a strategic communication plan. Boys, was I disappointed with this book. The book summary had promised a witty social analysis of how churches, universities, and museums have successfully embraced branding to increase their market share. The short 336-page book is divided into five chapters. Chapter 1 defines branding and depicts examples of branding tactics used in history and modern advertising. Twitchell explains there is an excess supply of interchangeable products, which requires marketers to get consumers emotionally involved with a story of a particular product. That's the brand. Chapter 2 is dedicated to analyzing branding techniques in churches in order to fill church pews. Twitchell shares his point of view, a controversial point of view, I may add, about mega churches and how they purposely resemble shopping malls in order to get people in the door. Chapter 3 discusses branding tactics used by universities in what the author calls higher ed ink. Although this was the chapter I was most excited about, the chap chapter discussed what universities do to retain or improve their ranking in the U.S. News and World Report. Apparently, this report is the significant means a university uses to tell its story or aka brand. Chapter 4 talks about how museums are utilizing branding to increase visitors. To be honest, the beginning of this chapter lost me because it detailed how art is used in advertising. They gave plenty of examples of how advertisement uses art, but I'm still trying to figure out how that tied to museums other than the fact that museums display art. But I digress. The author spent a lot of time on how museums have all but abandoned the once dignified displays of refined art and have resorted to motorcycle exhibits and displaying fashion house designs to intrigue visitors. The final chapter attempts to tie it all together. Although it appeared the author had been condemning branding trends throughout the earlier chapters, he indicated he actually believes that branding may be invigorating our high culture, bringing it to new audiences and making it a more integral part of our lives. Now that I have provided you a brief summary, I will now provide you my analysis on the good, the bad, and the ugly of this book. The good. The author was knowledgeable on marketing, advertising, and branding concepts. The first chapter applied this knowledge to provide an excellent introduction to branding. The author indicated that storytelling is the core of culture. He explains a good marketing plan is the one with a memorable story. Marketing in the economic sense is simply the process of getting this exchange to work efficiently, making money by storytelling. However, stories need not have anything to do with the product itself. Twitchell's premise that organizations live and die based on brand is nothing we haven't heard before. He pointed out that organizations that we don't think of as having a brand at all, like churches, universities, and museums, have been using them for years. The idea that these organizations are being forced to engage in branding in order to succeed has made for an interesting subject matter. It was enlightening to discover that these three institutions, which are not traditionally connected with marketing or even branding, have been use utilizing branding techniques right under our noses. Churches, for example, now offer two services each Sunday, a traditional and a non-traditional, one at 9 and one at 11. Universities utilize campus amenities like oversized student unions, movie theaters, athletics, etc., Museums offer less prestigious displays, like motorcycle exhibits, to draw in the crowd. The bad. The author makes the assumption that similar products are interchangeable. If consumers were logical, generic labels would only be utilized in the store aisle. Shockingly, at least to me, he claims many consumers would not be able to tell the difference between Coke and Pepsi. I personally challenge that claim. 
Twitch will list the ways colleges, churches, and museums have changed their offerings and missions dramatically in the last 20 years to align with demand market sensibilities. In the post-secondary education world, for example, the sensibility, the customer is always right, has led to inflation in all sectors of campus life, from rampant grade inflation to pompous football coaches, enormous student union buildings, with all manner of shopping opportunities and higher tuition. Universities have become brands, whether it's the smart brand of Harvard or Stanford or the jock brands like Oregon or Notre Dame. Twitchell basically argues that cultural and educational institutions must learn to align themselves with marketing, even though it's kind of evil, in order to retain their customers, or, which are in the form of students, parishioners, and museum goers. Although the author indicates he has interviewed numerous subject matter experts, there is no direct quotes nor other evidence provided to indicate the reasoning behind the changes these organizations have made over the years. Therefore, I feel the author has made a lot of assumptions based on surface value and the ugly. Twitchell suggests the brand-centered approach to anything decreases rigor overall, whether that's spiritually in churches, intellectually in the universities, or artistically in museums. Ultimately, he's saying that the product itself becomes less important than the idea of the product. So classes are the least important part of college, the exhibits are less important than the museum's prestige, and the church's brand is more important than what it is actually being preached. I find that terribly disturbing. Again, with the assumptions, I, I understand this author is a cynic, but come on. As a Christian, I found it extremely difficult to get through chapter two. The author appeared to write the church chapter from a pure marketing point of view with no care in the world for the spiritual reality. So my overall rating of this book is definitely a thumbs down. Although the author shared some good ideas on branding, his unproven assumptions was too much to bear. I found absolutely nothing helpful in this book to initiate branding tactics in the community college setting. The only reason why I would have recommended it is if you want a good debate in a class.